Hey guys, welcome to this video and my channel. My name is Heather. I am the owner and creator here at Wicked Whiskey Designs. And today we are working on mermaids. Look at all of that. This cup came out so freaking pretty. Um, I felt like I kind of needed to redeem myself from the last tutorial. The last one was kind of easy and a little bit scattered. And this one I threw the kitchen sink at. Um, we've got water slide. We've got alcohol ink. We've got a uh, peekaboo method. We've got double power wash. What else? What else? What else? We've got um, vinyl, of course, glitter, and even a little bit of offset outlining. Um, like I said, there's a ton, a ton going on with this cup, but I promise you it's really easy to do. I'm going to show you everything you need to do to make this cup, and you're going to see exactly how fun it is to make. Anything I've used on this cup, all of the supplies are linked below. So if you're looking for a particular glitter or you would like to know exactly what I use to make this cup, everything is there for you. Let's see what else. Uh, like and subscribe. This is a brand new channel. We have a ton of content on its way for you and you definitely want to get notified of when that drops as sometimes my schedule gets a little wonky. Um, definitely subscribe so that you're notified when my videos do drop. Other than that, that pretty much wraps up this intro. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, show you everything you need to make this cup. As always, you want to start with a fully prepped cup. Go ahead and sand your cup using sandpaper. I, you normally use a 60 grit sanding block, wipe off the excess sanding debris, and then I use Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint in flat white to cover my cup before sending it to epoxy. Next comes your water slide. After printing out your water slide on water slide paper, make sure that you seal it with clear sealer using short bursts. Once that is dry, you will then go ahead and make sure your cup and your water slide are completely saturated. Slowly slide your water slide off onto your cup and using a wet paper towel, smooth that out, making sure that all of your air bubbles are gone and that your water slide is smooth. Once your water slide is applied to your cup, you can go ahead and move on to adding the alcohol ink. I started with a small makeup sponge. I went ahead and took off the sharp corners of that sponge. And the secret to this is making sure that you have alcohol on your cup. I started out by adding alcohol and alcohol ink to little plastic cups, thinking that that was how I was going to move forward. And I found that was unnecessary. Add alcohol directly to your makeup sponge and dab over your your cup and then you can go ahead and add the actual alcohol ink directly at that point using the makeup sponge to dab your color around where you want it. Be mindful of your water slide. Remember you don't have epoxy on you know that water slide protecting it yet. If you are unsure you can send it to have a coat of epoxy before moving on to this step but that's totally up to you. Basically you're just going to keep adding alcohol and alcohol ink to your cup and dabbing it with that makeup sponge to get the desired look you're going for. The more layers of color, the better. The more, you know, blending and mushing it around, the better. You're not trying to pull that alcohol ink in any kind of specific direction. You're literally just taking your makeup sponge and dabbing it to blend those colors. Be mindful of the actual water slide. The one that we use has a lot of negative space and to create that dimension in that negative space very lightly, use the tip of your makeup sponge and to go in between those areas. And then once you're happy with it, you're done. At that point, go ahead and send this to epoxy. I am using micro layers of epoxy, so stir up maybe 15 to 20 mLs and apply it to your cup in an even layer with a gloved hand. Don't forget to blow your bubbles out using a torch. 
Once your epoxy is cured, you're going to add 631 mermaid scales. 631 is removable vinyl. So cut your mermaid scales out using your Cricut or your Silhouette. And then using transfer tape, transfer your scales to your cup in a random yet organized pattern of your pleasing. So basically what looks good, run with it. I went ahead and did a slight swirl down the back of my cup and then I also added little you know random scales here and there. These where you're putting these 631 scales is where your peekaboo scales are going to show through next to actual vinyl scales and um, and glitter. So I wanted to add quite a few of them knowing that not all of them would show. So once you're happy with that, then go ahead and move on to the next step. Hey guys, I hope you can see me. Um, it's this time of year, I'm in Florida. This time of year, we start getting thunderstorms every day around this time, which um, my little Venus flytrap farm loves and enjoys, but doesn't necessarily make for great videos in the, uh, the garage at this point. So hopefully you can see me. Um, okay, so we went ahead and we put all of our little 631 mermaid scales on here. What we're going to do is this. We're going to do a double power wash. So I've got, what do I have? Rust-Oleum Chalk Tidal Pond, sure, and uh, Rust-Oleum 2X Purple. Okay, what I'm going to do is this. I need to be real mindful of her, okay? So I'm not trying to go anywhere near her. I can take off at you know overspray if need be, but I'm not I'm not trying to cover her. Um, what I am trying to do is this little swoosh back here, uh, somewhat in a swirl or somewhat in an angle, and it's going to be power wash, okay? And then it's doing teal and then purple. I need to double check that. Um, so I'm gonna do power wash and then I'm gonna do a spray of teal and then a spray of purple directly on top of that. I'm gonna run inside, rinse it off. I'm not gonna take you with me, but um, I'm gonna rinse it off and then hopefully that will go ahead and um, double power spray on top of there just for a real fun effect. So um, we'll see. So once you're happy with your power wash, you're going to see that your epoxy is going to repel it. It's going to look a little trashy, but it's still going to look amazing once you go ahead and remove your 631 vinyl. Using a utility or a craft knife, go ahead and pull up that 60, that 631 vinyl, and you are going to be able to see if that power wash is going to leave behind the little peekaboo um, scales like we're hoping. As you'll find in this video as it goes on, it did not and a second run of power wash was necessary but this is basically just showing you that this is how you're going to go ahead and move forward you're going to take off those scales and then you're going to go from there let's see what we got here yeah it didn't they didn't pop i was hoping there would be more of a contrast you can see um like you can see the power wash in between the um, the scales, but honestly, I think the colors of the power wash were just too close to the color of the background. Like I can see that, like a little bit. Like it, it's just not even enough to where I'm going to stress about it. Okay, guys, you know how I just got done saying, you know what? I'm just not going to let that bother me. Sometimes things don't work out. It's okay. We're just going to move on. Yeah, it bothered me. So it didn't at first, and then the more I thought about it, the more it did. So I went back out. And I re-hit it. And I hit it with black first this time. And then I did the teal and then I did purple. So we'll see if that helped. Um, honestly, if it didn't work this time, I'm not going to stress about it. And I actually mean that. Hey, look, that looks a little bit better. Um, and it is still true that, you know what, sometimes things just don't work. But yeah, it doesn't hurt to try it one more time. Whoops, sorry. So power wash versus scales, take two. Go ahead and take off those 631 scales again. You're going to see this one um, went much better than the last attempt. Yeah. I'm happy. Okay. I'm going to go send it for epoxy and then we're going to move on. You know, again. <laughs> this is where we're at. Look at those scales. 
I know. When I was like, no, we're going to let it go. It won't bother me. They didn't pop up. That lasted all about five minutes, if that. So happy, happy, joy, joy with that. What we're going to do now is add some actual vinyl scales on here as well. Um, not too many, just enough so we can kind of get a little a little bang bang out of the effect um, I've cut scales out of silver vinyl I'm gonna go ahead and weed these and kind of sporadically start placing them um, where I want them now this is 651 vinyl I've cut these scales out of permanent metallic silver vinyl and using transfer tape I'm going to apply them to the cup I am not trying to um, cover the peekaboo scales that we did on the last step I'm working around those scales so that there is a nice mix of both um, you know strong vinyl scales and then those little shadow scales next to them are mixed in between um, using your transfer tape just go ahead and apply them wherever it is that makes you happy you know, I did kind of like a slight swirl pattern down the cup, um, added a couple in the, you know, at the top on one side and the bottom on the other, and um, just kind of have fun with it. Just kind of eyeball it and see exactly where you want to um, to uh, add them to make the pattern that you, you know, that makes you the happiest. And if you're putting scales up at the very top of the cup that overhang the top of the cup, don't forget to use a sharp utility knife or a craft knife to go ahead and slice across the top there so that your scales don't hit exactly the top. You wanna make sure there's a little area of um, stainless steel that would be able to hold epoxy so that it will seal the top of your cup. Okay guys, so. Um, I went ahead and I sprayed this back section with a spray adhesive. You're going to see where I went and kind of like pulled some of like the weeding webbing and kind of laid that in there so that when I put the glitter down, maybe some of these little inside sections don't get glitter. And I thought that'd be a fun little pop. These are in no way uniform. I don't know if the idea is going to even work. We'll see. Um, and since so much, so many of these were actually like placed by hand, it wouldn't really work. So I just kind of threw them in a couple little spots. We'll see what happens. Um, if I had any more of the 631 scales, I would actually cover up some of these, um, but I don't. And to be honest, I'm not really overly worried about it. I'm kind of scared if this little process is going to work or not. Now comes the fun part. Glitter! Yay! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. You want to go ahead and start sprinkling your glitter. I have sprayed this cup with spray adhesive and now I am lightly going through, knowing that I'm using multiple glitters, um, not trying to drown any particular area of the cup with any particular glitter. I am simply going through and giving each of those glitters their chance to shine on their own, just sprinkling a little bit of each color here and a little bit of each color there. I am being extremely mindful of my peekaboo um, scales. I don't want to cover those completely. I don't mind a little bit of glitter on them, but I definitely don't want them to disappear as we obviously put a lot of work into making sure they exist to begin with. I kind of feel maybe this is done. Maybe. I'm going to go ahead, uh, get my brush at this, take off the spots that I don't want glitter to be on so that we don't lose those peekaboos. Um, I'm going to pull up the webbing. We'll see if that bright idea worked or not. And I'll clean up the, the glitter off of here. Uh, so hit it with spray sealer. And as long it's, as it is uh, where I want it to be, which I actually almost think it's going to be, um, it's going to get sent for epoxy. And then we're going to be moving on to the final step. So, okay, that's where we're at. Okay, and for anyone who has no idea what I was talking about when I said a steel brush like that, this is old and worn and it's just got really, really, it's not steel. Well, maybe it is. Um, it's just got really, really coarse hair um, bristles and this thing is awesome. I use this to get sanding debris off cups. I use it to clean tables. I It's just a catch-all and um, it's awesome. So. If you don't have one of these, grab one because they are definitely a multitasker. Okay, so went ahead, took that webbing off. I don't hate that. It would have worked better if I had actually planned ahead of time for me to do that. Um, I would have sized it out and kept the right things, you know, etc. Not worried about it though. Um, I think this came out absolutely 
so awesome so fun you can still see all of the um a good chunk of the peekaboo scales which is what i wanted um let's see here i got a couple over there um yeah i think this came out this came out a lot of fun like i said it's still going to get um one more coat of epoxy it's going to go ahead and get um a couple little vinyl outlines around some of the peekaboos and then she's done so really happy with how she's coming out i hope you are too see ya Next, I sent this for epoxy. I stirred up 30 mLs of epoxy and very mm -hmm. delicately, very gently applied the, um, the epoxy to the cup, making sure to be mindful of that glitter. I'm not trying to smear that glitter all over the cup, so I was very delicate and purposeful in, you know, making sure that I didn't do that. Um, blow out your bubbles, obviously, with a torch. Once that epoxy was cured, I went ahead and cut out scales and offset scales using a blue-green color shift vinyl and then applied those pieces to the cup where I thought the cup needed an extra little pop of color. Went ahead, added a little bit of shimmer additive to, um, to about 30 mLs of epoxy, applied that to the cup with a gloved hand, and then blew out bubbles using my torch and then I just went ahead and let this spin. Um, once it was, this was cured, it did need one more coat of epoxy, so I uh, repeated the process and, um, and she was done. Hey guys, <sighs> tips and tricks on this cup. Can I just tell you how much I love this cup? Ugh, ugh, forget the dogs. This is my new baby. Um, this cup was a, a ton of fun to make. It really was. You know, I, um, very blessed to be very busy. Um, I do tumblers for customers. I do a ton of custom orders, which I know a lot of tumbler makers don't like to do. Um, very busy, even on these in certain, you know, economic times. So extremely blessed in that. That being said, that does not leave me very much time to, um, to get creative on my own. Okay. Um, other than doing this channel. And that's honestly like the reason I started this channel. Number one is I thought I had a lot of, you know, helpful information to share that maybe a lot of other Tumblr makers don't touch on as much. Um, and number two, this is kind of like my little outlet, you know, I don't really get a lot of time to just have fun with tumblers. Um, so this is my little, this is my little safe space to have fun. That being said, this cup, I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to, I had an idea in my head and then I was like, this is what we're going to run with. This is honestly going to be probably part one of three. Um, when I initially found this um, water slide for this mermaid, it was a toss up between this and another one. And I couldn't decide because I love them both. And I even put it up on my social media and it was pretty much a 50-50 split. So I have to do uh, the other one next week and I'm going to do a totally different mermaid method, you know, um, so it's gonna be a totally different cup and I'm looking forward to doing that. And then my husband just totally rooked me into doing one for him, you know, because he doesn't have an entire kitchen cabinet, you know, full of his own of cups that I've done for him, but we need to have one more. So his is going to be kind of more, um, I don't want to say more of a man vibe, but um, a lot more blacks and grays and evil kraken and pirate ships and stuff like that so this is becoming a thing so if um you know cursed sea creatures are your jam definitely subscribe because we're going to be doing that for the next couple weeks um uh, if they're not your jam that's totally cool too but i will say that i'm throwing every process at these cups that i can think of so you're definitely going to want to kind of hang out and watch the tutorials anyway because chances are there's going to be something in there that'll help you that that's that that's the whole intro to the tips and tricks section we know that i ramble at this section so you know everyone plan accordingly tips and tricks for this cup okay let's go through a few things number one um start with a white base okay you uh see in the video where i started with a white base a very micro thin um layer of epoxy between these layers the only one that I went a little thicker on and did two coats was at the very end. And that was to, you know, obviously cover everything completely, especially because I had chunky glitter on here. So when you are, if you're making this and you're going through these steps, make those epoxy layers thin. And I'm not a thin epoxy layer girl. I'm telling you to go thin because you're going to need multiple. 
you know, you, there's a lot of different layers. So you don't want to do like full thick coats of epoxy on every single one because your cup's going to be 47 pounds by the time you're done. Um, and I've made those cups. That's why I'm saying don't do that. So start with your white base. Um, you're going to go ahead and epoxy, uh, you know, do a layer of epoxy on there. Do not try to put a water slide on an unepoxied cup. I've tried that. It doesn't work. So definitely don't skip that part where you are putting, you know, that first layer of epoxy on. When it comes to water slide, water slides are kind of my nemesis. Um, either they go really well or they don't at all. Um, I watch other tumbler makers and they got the little squeegee and they're doing this and they're doing that. And theirs comes out perfect. If I put a squeegee on this, I would have that thing crumpled up in 2.4 seconds. So it's just not, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's just me. Um, but when it comes to your water slide, you are obviously going to make sure you get all of your air pockets out. Let your water slide sit for, I don't know, maybe about an hour before you try to epoxy it. I know that um, some people will let them sit for, you know, a day. If you've got that kind of time going on, absolutely. Let it sit for, you know, as long as you would like in that respect. I have a tendency to rush through things because, you know, like I said, busy girl, as a lot of us are. Um... I know sometimes I rush things and don't let them sit to the proper time frame, but eh, whatever it works. Um, alcohol ink section. Alcohol ink, um, I kind of struggle with sometimes, but I'm going to say this. The tip and trick of the day on that is make sure that you have alcohol on your cup, not in your cup. If you have it in your cup, that's a different conversation, a different video altogether. But make sure you have alcohol on your cup. If you do what I had to kind of go back through my little decision tree and practice how I knew how I wanted it to look. I had to think about how what the steps were that I needed to take to make it look how I wanted it to look. Um if you take your alcohol ink and just dab it on your cup straight, it's going to stain into your epoxy and you're going to have like little spots, not what we're going for. Um, so definitely make sure you have your alcohol on the cup before you put alcohol ink on there. It's going to help it, you know, move around and be all dreamy and not just, you know, stick into your cup and spots. Um, and you'll see in the video too, like I started one way and I was like, let's put it in the cups. And, and in the end, I didn't even need to do the cups with the little, with the alcohol ink. Just make sure you have alcohol on your cup. Um, the colors that I used, honestly, this wasn't one of those uh, cups where I was like, I have all these, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to buy all this stuff to make this cup. There are cups where I have to do that. Like I have this bright idea and then I go and, you know, I need to buy this and I want to buy this and buy all this stuff. That's not what this cup is, and it doesn't need to be that way for you either. The alcohol inks that I used came out of my bin o alcohol inks, you know, that I've accumulated over the years. Um, if you have a teal or a purple or a blue and it's in the same, you know, vibe of what you're trying to do, just run with it. You don't need to spend extra money on stuff like that. Um, plus, the alcohol ink section, like we did all that work for the alcohol. And the alcohol ink, all it is, it's going to be your peak, basically your, a little bit of your background, but also it's your, your peekaboo, um, scales. So don't go spend a ton of money on alcohol ink when you're only going to see that much of it anyway. So just kind of, you know, don't do that. I do that. I've done that. So I'm telling you, don't do that. Um, couple things that I had in my head, this is how we're going to do it. And then as I actually did it, it didn't work out very well at all. Um, you know, some of these cups that I do in these tutorials, I've done a hundred times. Some of these cups are cups where I'm like, I want to do that. I don't have time to do that in my real life. So I'm going to do it for the channel because I think that, you know, it'll be a fun cup to show people. And there's a lot of process involved and, you know, it's, it'll be a good time. The, um, the peekaboo scale section. Okay. You'll see in the video where I was like, you know, my first way of doing it and it didn't work out. And I was like, that's okay. I'll be all right. We don't need peekaboo scales. Yes, we do. We need all the peekaboo scales. Um, to actually achieve that, I went ahead, laid down more scale, uh, 631 cutouts. And because I was pissed that it didn't work, 
I went back out in my garage and I did, um, okay, what did I do? I added power wash, you know, to her so she would not get covered. And then I was mad and I wasn't paying attention. So I just spray painted it black and then I did the blue or, you know, the teal and the this and the that. And then I was like, crap, I didn't actually do any power wash where I needed to actually put it. So I was like, <clears throat> so I took my acetone and I wiped it all off. That is a happy little mistake because I had the 631 decals on there by just wiping off all that black, it outlined, you know, around the outline around those decals stayed. So that helped, you know, punch them a bit. So, you know, the I, I don't know if that's relevant or not. If you want to try to do that extra step or not, it was a mistake. So, you know, but it worked out well. Um, I think without doing that, it, it should still be fine. And just, you know, sometimes these things just don't go like you think they're going to go, even if you have a plan. The double power wash, you want to move fast. Um, power wash for me took a little way, little time to get my head into learning it. You would think it'd be very easy. And for some people, it probably is. Some people who've watched a ton of tutorials, they probably have it on lock before they even do their first one. I am that girl that watches a tutorial for four seconds and says, I totally got this. I totally very randomly ever got this. So sometimes I am, I'm more of a trial by fire kind of a girl, in case you haven't figured that out. Um, definitely power wash your image, like a hundred percent, because you don't want any overspray to get on her. Um, as far as the rest of it, you're going to do like a 50, 50, you want the power wash there. Keep in mind, the more power wash you have on the, the more your background's going to show, the less your power wash, you know, spray is going to exist. So I kind of do a 50, 50 hit on it so that you get the little bubbles and the power wash, um, effect, but you still are not completely covering and you're still not completely not covering. So kind of now, if you do that, you don't like how it comes out. Um, grab, grab a paper, you know, some paper towels and some acetone and just wipe it right off. Um, and then start again. So that's my best advice on that. If you feel unsure about power wash, grab a tumbler that, you know, maybe is a junk tumbler that, you know, you have that you're going to strip or something like that and practice before you do this. I practiced a lot to figure out what the hell to do because whereas everyone was just doing this and it was so easy for me for whatever reason, it just wasn't. So I had to practice to kind of start getting an idea of how the right way to do this. Um, no shame to that game. Let's see. That was that. Um, bah, bah, bah. 631 vinyl always for your removable um, scales. If not, if you now, if you don't have 631 and you're using 651 permanent vinyl, you can certainly do that. But just understand that in doing that, when you pull your scales up, there's a really strong chance that there's going to be adhesive left behind. Okay. Um, I've had to do it in a pinch because I have. Um, you can definitely work through it. It's not something that, you know, if you know that 631 is something that you're going to be using in the future or hey i like this idea hey i've got an idea for another cup i, I didn't even know remove removable vinyl existed um you know definitely you know grab some i think it's usually you know 10 12 bucks it's definitely a lifesaver but if you don't have any you can't find any you know whatever the the situation is with that you want to rush out and make this right now and you don't have any um you can definitely use 651 just understand that chances are you're going to have a little bit of adhesive left behind and based on um that you know use your decision tree on if you if you want to counter that or, or take that chance um let's see what else we're up to peekaboo um, we've done peekaboo. We've gotten to the power wash. Okay. One thing that seemed like a bright idea to me after the fact, and I really have to say I dig it. And if I had thought about it ahead of time, I would have, um, I would have done it probably a little bit more. You'll I actually put the actual silver or vinyl, um, scales on, and then I'm about to glitter because I want the glitter to go over the scales. And then I ripped out a little piece of like the inner webbing 
and added it back on the cup all kind of janky like that's actually a really freaking good idea um, if I had not thought about that sooner I would have been much more mindful and much more you know I would have done it much better but if you can look here where are we at you can see where like the inside of those scales you know it's not covered in glitter and that's awesome there's glitter but it's not like completely saturated so it's giving you that definition and that separation and that's actually really kind of fun so something to think about um you know is it necessary no because your glitter is not going to cover this 100 percent, but at the same time it does give it one more little layer of interest um whether it's subtle or not whether you're the only one who knows it's you know what's going on there or not um, it does give it just a little, it breaks that out a little bit. So, um, you know, it was, that was one of those things, again, seemed like a good idea at the time. It kind of worked out. There was no planning to it, but it's definitely something that maybe you could, you know, add to yours if you decide, if you wanted to. Um, glitter. Okay. So the glitter that I used, um, it's going to be linked down below. Okay. In the description box below, everything I used is down there. This also falls back to, um, you know, if you have glitter, that's something that you love, that's going to work with the color vibe you're going for. Don't spend the money if you, you know, if you have something close. Um, I hate to be that person that's always like, hi, here's all the stuff to buy. Don't buy any of it. I'm not trying to be like that. But, you know, right now, and like, especially in these economic times, you know, I don't have extra money for glitter. You know what I mean? Nobody does. So if you don't have the exact, um, the exact glitters and you're like, I really like that cup. I don't have, you know, it's just not something I can do right now or whatever. Don't, don't stress on that. Cups are fun. These things are supposed to be fun and a good time. And yes, this is how mine turned out. And guess what? If I, you know, it's a different day. I'm going to go in a different color direction. And it just, like I said, don't, don't stress so much on the colors, the exact things, if it's not something that you're in a position to worry about. Um, you know, I say that because like I said, right now, a lot of people, a lot of us, and I'm including myself on that. Um, you know, it's a very uncertain economic time right now. Don't blow your paycheck on glitter. If you have, you know, purple and instead of it being purple teal or you know you have this shade of purple instead of that shade of purple girl just roll with it you'll be fine don't worry about it um so the glitter the glitter um you know I was really scared about the glitter because we know me glitter is you know the more glitter the better I really tried not to do that because I didn't want to completely cover this and honestly my favorite part of this cup is probably going to be the little peekaboo can you see where am I at like the little peekaboo um scales that are peeking through those are like my favorite part and I didn't want to cover them and I probably covered them a little bit more than I than I wanted to they're there they're I they know they're there but still um so go real light with your glitter I think I did two three passes understand that your first pass you know it's like anything else your first pass of glitter very 50 percent of it isn't even going to stick so it gives you the opportunity to go as light or as heavy as you want um be mindful of your peekaboos. That's all I'm going to say there. And like I said in the video, every grandpa has one of those big steel, you know, those big brushes, whatever they're made out of, you know, they're amazing. If you don't have one, go steal one. Go to your grandpa's house and go get it. He'll give it to you. He loves you. Um, because I use that thing for everything. You know, glitter on a cup and it doesn't work out like your ombre blows that day. You can just wipe the whole thing off and start again. Um, I use it around the shop. I use one of those electric um, hand sanders. So I have sander debris everywhere, psh, gone. You know, like I said, it's those things are awesome. I guess it, it's one of those little, um, you know, garage supplies that maybe nobody talks about, but trust me, go get one. Um, is there anything else? Okay, so the one thing I didn't show on film is this, because at this point I was like, I feel like this video is gonna go on forever. Um, and it was at the end, it was like Friday night and I was finishing up and I was like, nobody needs to see me do this part, but maybe, maybe not. Um, the little green scales and the offsets, um, the offset, um, outlines. I basically on my silhouette have, you know, I had my scale pattern. I went ahead and did an offset around, you know, 
here's a chunk of scales. I did an offset around it and then I just cut that and then I sent that to cut. That's all I did to get these little, um, these little offset scales. So, you know, it was just as easy as that. I just, you know, offset everything and then like I said, just sent it all to cut and then just, you know, that's how it was. So that's the only thing I think was not shown on the video. So if anybody has any questions on that or needs any, you know, more, a more definitive idea on how to do that, just let me know, reach out. Um, I'm literally everywhere on social media. My email address, for whatever reason, is locked down by Google right now. So I, when I get like a spare, you know, 10 minutes, I'll go create a new um, email address and put that out to the world. But for whatever reason, my existing one isn't working. Um, so if you've sent me messages, I'm not getting them. Um, that was pretty much it. I absolutely, I cannot love this cup more if I try. Can you see her? Where's my thing? She's freaking gorgeous. Ah! And like I said, this is going to be Bailey. Bailey. Sorry. I think that's pretty much it. I feel like I rambled. We know I do. We know this is, I should just not even name this the tips and tricks section. I should just name this Heather's rambling on section, but um, I think that's pretty much it. So I hope you have fun making this cup. I hope you had fun watching this tutorial and um, have a great week. I'll see you. Bye.